Hello everyone, I am DeWeather Dude. Welcome back. And today we are going to be talking about the first 2022 Atlantic Hurricane season forecast. I do apologize for my long absence because school has really been keeping me busy. And now that spring break finally rolled around the corner and tried getting everything together and it was not working, but I did finally get everything to work right today and just in time as well because we have the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season not too far away because we know activity typically does like to start in the month of May sometimes. So this could be right on time here. And of course, updates will be coming every few days to a week or so to keep an update on the hurricane season. And we also do have some updates on a snowstorm, but that will be for another video. So here, start off like with the models here. Now the models really don't show anything too exciting, right? I mean, it is um, it is earlier in the hurricane season. So like it's not even in hurricane season, it's only April. So really no activity to talk about. All right, so just some just some isolated areas of convection, really nothing to talk about on the GFS. Um, if we go to the Canadian, again, pretty much same story. And you can see there are some areas, like you'll see like some wavy areas that'll come off of like Haiti and Dominican Republic, right? They'll make like a, like a funneling motion, if you will, but really nothing uh, to watch, except when we do see maybe a frontal boundary that just dropped like this. Uh, sometimes cyclones can, you know, spawn off of that and, you know, move their way to the north. So that's something we typically watch for in like April or more so May and June. So we'll watch for that because they, because the Canadian model does try and signal, uh, signal that that could happen. Um, again, you can see kind of like a little mini low pressure kind of rotate off of that on the 850 millibar uh, cyclonic vorticity signature. But again, something to watch more down the road, right? Now the European model, again, also really not showing too much within the next 90 hours or so. Pretty much high pressure is gonna be parked over the region. Uh, next storm system comes in um, over the mainland United States, but nothing to talk about really from the tropical perspective. All right, now here we have the, um, basically this is like the 200, uh, the 200 HP uh, vortice anomaly. So basically all this is is saying like the green means more convection and the red and orangish color is like less convection to put into simple terms. All right, so looking at this, you can see for right now, it is, we are seeing you know, lower convection over the Gulf of Mexico, Western Atlantic, where you would normally see uh, those, you know, those tropical cyclones or tropical waves uh, spawn at this time of year. And then the, you know, the tropical, East Tropical Atlantic over here starts to become a little bit more convective. But again, late April and May, we really don't see anything form out there. But then as we get towards early May, mid-May, now we start to see like average convection, right? Like not above or below average. So, you know, this can mean maybe something could form closer to home given the right development conditions. And look at this. By like the third week of May or so, we got some stuff or some convection trying to form, you know, at least an above average area convection where something could form. And it does sort of last through the end of the month of May, but not really, but it does start to fizzle out. And again, sometimes these do move in waves, right? So this red area could move here next, then this green area moves here, and then moves over here. So it's almost kind of like a left to right motion here. And these little bouts of, you know, the red color and the green color move from left to right over time, right? So here is the GEFS model. Again, you can sort of see that, right? The green areas does move to the east over time, right? So now they reach the Western United States, but again, if you were to extend this out further, maybe the green would reach the Gulf of Mexico, but again, it doesn't yet. So for now, maybe a little bit less convection. So maybe, of course, that would explain why the models don't show very much right now. But this, now I've been looking at this map probably since March, and this area really has not changed. Just one area in like the central eastern Gulf of Mexico has just been really like furiously above average. Like that little area in like the darkest shade of red realize that that's four to five plus Celsius above average. Right? Even just the Gulf of Mexico as a whole, like 98% of it is like above average on the sea surface temperatures. And like, there's like one little area and that's about it. Like the Caribbean overall, again, also above average to a degree, you know, the Western Atlantic as well uh, near Bermuda. But this one spot right here, my goodness. I was talking about this area a lot in the hurricane season last year, I think even 2020 as well, because, right, it's just this little area like in the central Gulf of Mexico, that if a storm were to move over, you know, it would explode, right? And that's why. Um, but there also are some currents that do move in this general direction, all right? So a lot of the currents do move around this area. So that could be one reason why, but that area is coming back this year. And you can see it on the uh, the sea surface temperatures currently. 
like realize now when you hear that, like I'm going to tell you guys right now that these sea surface temperatures here are 80 to 82. And you might think, okay, well, that's not, that's pretty normal. But also remember, it's still April. Like normally the 80 to 82 waters are still sitting down in the Caribbean, right? So all this yellow area right here is like 77 plus, basically. So that can like form a tropical storm, kind of, but it really can't form a healthy hurricane. But what can is these waters that are between 80 and 82 that are now spreading across the Gulf of Mexico, right? And the Caribbean, of course, well above 80 degrees. And even parts of the Gulf Stream, right? So there is some orange inside of that yellow, depending on, like, like for me, I can see the colors fine because, like, of the, of the contrast. But depending on what device you're watching on, maybe not. But there are some slight shadings of orange inside of there. So that is above 80 degrees, or right at 80 degrees, and definitely above in this in this area in the Western Caribbean and also through the uh, Central Gulf of Mexico, where that one spot is, right? And you can see the trend in the past seven days, right? You can see the trends have been two and a half to three Celsius increase per week uh, in that area. And even the Western Gulf of Mexico, there's been some uh, increase in sea surface temperatures, right? Or the sea surface temperature trends, right? Western Caribbean as well. And then also near the Bahamas and also off the coast of Florida, between Florida and Bermuda, right? And we do like to, I'm um, focusing closer to home, like the Caribbean, the Southwest Atlantic and the Caribbean because in the Gulf of Mexico, because that's where we typically see uh, development this time of year. I really don't like to focus on the East Tropical Atlantic until like maybe June or July, right? But here, again, 80, 82, but that also extends all the way up this one spot here in the Gulf of Mexico. Honestly, it's really this entire area that's like between 80 and 82, right? So if a storm were to, let's say, form in the Caribbean and move right up and get dragged along like this, could have a hurricane forming if the dry air and wind shear are also, uh, you know, all set in place or and very low. Now, the Western Gulf of Mexico, again, outside of that area, upper 70s, again, not bad considering that it is only April, right? And it is actually above average for this time of year by about a degree or two Celsius, which still is kind of significant, right? The Gulf Stream is also above average, okay? Like we got close to 80, if not hitting 80, all the way up to off the coast of North Carolina, right? And then once you get away from that, obviously, we got 40s and 50s for sea surface temperatures along the Dunmarva and Jersey Shore. All right, but again, it's normal, it's April. Um, but definitely areas to watch here would be that area in the Gulf of Mexico as well as the Caribbean, even near the Bahamas, it's approaching 80 now, all right? And you know, we can only get, maybe we might even get warmer later on. So this is just a map from the uh, ocean, uh, the ocean hurricane, I'm sorry, the National Hurricane Center and the Ocean Prediction Center, I got the two names mixed up. You can see two little areas. These are like considered tropical waves on the Ocean Prediction Center's website. Um, there are two little areas to watch and two little waves, but not, they're not like organized tropical waves, but they are waves of energy uh, that do need to be watched. And of course, there's also, if you see at the top there, a little stalled front, which I did say is how sometimes low pressures can spawn off. So again, these are all just little things that we have to watch because we know it doesn't take much for uh, tropical activity to form. Tropical intensity index. All right, this map is from, I believe, Track the Tropics. If you go on there, you can also find this map. Um, highly unfavorable right now of course on the pacific side of course it's a lot it's a lot different their hurricane season also starts earlier but as of 1103 this morning really nothing really no favorable conditions and you might be asking well why the sea surface temperatures were pretty good and yes you're right but also there are other things to watch like the wind shear and the dry air which i will get to in a bit and so here is the 850 uh millibar vorticity signature and you can see there is an area out there uh, when I get to the models, uh, or the, you're gonna, or sorry, you did see with the models earlier that uh, that area was, you know, developing and moving out to sea. That's just like an extra tropical low, nothing tropical related. But there are areas, all right, that do, you know, they do bear watching. All right, there are areas in northern South America it happens every, you know, late spring and summer that convective activity can form. It doesn't happen too often, but it has before. So again, something to watch. All right, maybe we get that. Central American gyre to form where that that big low pressure can just you know sit right here and then spawn off other little low pressures from it All right, that has also happened before Now looking at the dry air now you might be looking at this and thinking okay There's a lot of dry air no way anything can form and you would be correct, but what's also uh, a correct assertion to make here is that Honestly for April I have seen drier 
I think even think in the past, you know, couple years or two years ago, I've seen more dry air than this before. Now, again, this could be just a temporary lull in the dry air, but for right now, not looking like a lot of dry air. And that could be something to, you know, pay attention to down the road, especially as we get into April, I'm sorry, later April, May, and into June. All right, and I will also have, I did actually make my own, my own table, just showing like my, you know, you know, my preliminary forecast, just, just to show what might happen uh, for the hurricane season. I also did put a bunch of other weather companies that have already put out their predictions. So definitely uh, stay tuned for the end for that. But again, I have seen drier air before. All right. Now the Gulf of Mexico, again, pretty much a lot of dry air. Now there are clouds in the middle or the clouds are, makes it look like there's less dry air, but there still is dry air in those areas. It just looks like because the clouds are kind of like affecting the map. But here where you can see the blue down to the ocean, all right. And this is as if you're looking from a satellite. So you can see down to the ocean here. And that means obviously there's no dry air in the Caribbean really, except for the Northwestern part. All right, and the East Tropical Atlantic, of course, does have a lot of dry air. That's that's definitely normal for March and April. All right, but hopefully, you know, well, no, maybe not hopefully, because obviously we don't want hurricanes to, you know, affect land and be destructive. But of course, when a hurricane stays out the sea, it does look very nice. So if you're looking for hurricanes to form and to watch them, you know, for their visual glory, all right, hopefully the dry air will, you know, wane off as we head towards, you know, the months of May and June and some activity could start forming. But again, you know what I'm talking about here. Here's North, Northern South America. All right, a lot of convection down there right now. All right, tropical cyclone heat potential, right? Everyone knows I, I do like to show this map a lot because it's not just about the sea surface temperature, it's about what is under the ocean, right? Because if the sea surface temperature could be, you know, 80 or 82, and then if we go right under the surface and the water starts cooling off dramatically, then a tropical cyclone really can't form. But in the Caribbean, we do have some, you know, lower, but even at times moderate um, uh, tropical cyclone heat potential, meaning the underbody of that ocean is warmer, right? And it's heating up and that's allowing for some, maybe some tropical cyclones that move through that area to pick up on that energy. Uh, it's starting to trickle into the Gulf of Mexico. Again, it's only April. This is normal for it to not be there yet. I would say give it another couple of weeks, you're going to start to see a move uh you know, this area will move north gradually a lot quicker. And probably by August or September, this will probably be all filled in, maybe even further north than where I drew. All right, so as well. Wind shear, all right, now wind shear is pretty high. And looking at some of the other uh, graphs here, it actually is above average for the Caribbean region. All right, and, you know, seems true because like wind shear is above 60, 70 knots right now. To like form a tropical system, you would probably need greens and blues, meaning like 20 knots of shear or less, and even that's pushing it. So yeah, a lot of dry air, I'm sorry, a lot of wind shear and dry air in this in this region. So really not looking to form any tropical cyclones in the near future, but it is something to look forward to, or I'm sorry, to look, you know, look forward upon down the road. And again, the East Coast, you know, it's a little little bit less wind shear and shear has, shear has been decreasing, right? If you look at the blue lines, like, like right here, shear has been decreasing in the past 24 hours, but it's still very high, all right? And even so, it is very early in the hurricane season. This is just like a preliminary look. And of course, a look that will be updated upon every like, you know, five or seven days, hopefully. Now for the month of June, all right? In the month of June, all right, we typically start to see, uh, again, activity forming down here, where again, that one area I showed you was, right? That had a lot of, a little bit of uh, cyclonic vorticity on it, if I can, I can go back and find it real quick. I believe it was right here. Yeah, right here. So you can see that area that did have some, you know, some cyclonic vorticity signature on it, right? That is the area as well as other parts of the Caribbean where activity typically does form, all right? And the blue is not where necessarily it forms, but where it tracks, right? So it can track in this region right here and it can track in this region right here. And again, that central and Eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico is the more likely area, that green area is where more um, tracks have gone. So basically what, what the NOAA has done is basically gone back in time, looked at the June tropical systems and found, you know, out of all of these tracks, it pretty much looks like spaghetti, right? And which area has, you know, been moved over the most by these systems. And that area in the Eastern Gulf of Mexico has been it. So they labeled it more likely. And that's also <laughs> coincidentally happens to be the same area where we have that very, very, uh, warm 
or above average sea surface temperature anomaly. So yeah, kind of concerning, but again, that is June, but May is typically the same thing. Activity stays close to home. And now let's get to the preliminary outlook. All right, so the preliminary outlook. So on the left, we have the uh, average. All right, and so the so the for the context, the top one is tropical storms, the middle one is hurricanes, and then the bottom one is major hurricanes. So average per season, all right, we typically see 14 tropical storms, um, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. All right, so I can put it here for reference. Um, so for AccuWeather, they actually did release their outlook, and they are forecasting 16 to 20 named storms, uh, six to eight hurricanes, and <laughs> three to five major hurricanes. So really looking a lot like the past what six years i think i think 20 ever since 2016 and above average season it has been forecast to some degree all right so this has been a pretty you know a good streak here all right the last six years have been decently active all right and even even if one hurricane season in the past six hasn't been that active there's been one storm that has been crazy right we know 2017 harvey was a monster 2018 florence was a complete monster 2020 I right, had some, I believe, Hurricane Michael, right? And 2016, we had Hurricane Matthew. So there was just a lot of, you know, a lot of storms. But each season does have that storm that just destroys, you know, it just wrecks everybody, which is really a shame. But the Weather Channel, again, 20 named storms, uh, eight hurricanes, and four major hurricanes. So this is looking a lot like the past couple years, actually, because what typically is happening here and what the pattern I'm seeing is that the and again this pretty much did happen in 2021 so the these companies were actually right that we get the the name storms are like far above average but the hurricanes and major hurricanes typically stay closer to average um because look the name storms is six above the average but yet the hurricanes and the major is only one above the average at least for the weather channel so just interesting something to keep an eye on Colorado State University, again, uh, a company that typically comes out with their outlooks in April, did call for 19 named storms, nine hurricanes, so more hurricanes, and four major hurricanes. And my preliminary forecast for number one as of now is 15 to 18 named storms, five to eight hurricanes, and three to four major hurricanes. It is still early, so I find it um, really not appropriate to put a, like did what CSU and the Weather Channel did and just stick an exact number down because um, that tends to move. So I did put a small range, and of course that range will probably get uh, smaller with time. Thank you guys for watching this video. It was good to be back. Thank you for watching the preliminary 2022 hurricane outlook, and definitely more will be coming in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I am Dweather Dude, signing off. Till next time.